At the end of this video, you will understand how to use Block with Flutter once and for all. We will create this Batman counter app together. This is everything we will talk about in this video. So let's start right now with step number one. Popspect.yarm Inside the popspect, you will need to add the Flutter block. And that's it. Maybe you wonder if you need to also add the block package. But no, you don't need to do this. You only need to have the Flutter block because this one will already have block inside. All right, so now that you have the Flutter block, you will need to get package or run the Flutter pub get. For this project, I also add an image, which is the Batman image. You can see inside my folders, I have this batman.png. So this was it for the popspec.yarn. We are ready for the next step. Main. Inside the main, you have your material, which need to have the block provider. This will allow your application to use your block everywhere inside your app. So you absolutely need to have this. But if you need to have more than one block, which is probably the case, you will need to use instead the multi block provider. And for this one, you will need to use the provider's arguments and inside you will put a block provider. And it's pretty much the same logic. So you can just cut all of this and put it inside the create and remove this thing, put your two commas and save. So this is how you use the multi-block provider instead of using only the block provider. So even if I restart my app, everything is still working. Great, so now let's move into the next step. How everything works. Okay, so the next thing is to make sure that you understand how it works with block. First, we have the main, then we have the counter page. So when you click a button inside the counter page, this will trigger an event. The event will go inside the block machine and it will release a new state. In this example of the application, it will release a state with a new new Batman logo. And we can do this forever. If I click the button, trigger the state, go into the machine and release a new state. Another thing you have to understand is all of this, the event, the block and the state is always one thing together. So if I go inside my application, you will see that I have my block, which inside I have the block, the event and the state. So you need all three of them for each action. Great. So now that this is out of the way, you will need to create the counter block. This will be a simple class counter block, which will extend the block. So you can see that the block is coming from the package Flutter block. The block will require two things, the event and the state, which we will create later. After this, you can create a default value if you need to. For example, we have the zero as a default value. Later, we will create this counter state. So don't worry if you don't understand. Next, when you use the counter block, you will need to define a counter event, which will either be the counter increment or the decrement pressed. Again, don't worry because we will build all of this inside the counter event. So once the block understand which event has been triggered by the user, you will now emit a new state. And the new state will be again a counter state, but we'll use the previous state dot count plus one. So this brings us to the next step, which is to build the counter state. So if we go inside counter state, you will see that this is pretty much a model. Inside we have an int count and that's it. So when you click a button, this will trigger an event, by example, increment counter. It will go inside the block machine and it will change the state. This is the counter state. It will change it for more or less. But the next question is, how do we create the event? And this bring us to the next step. Event. Great. So if we go inside counter event.dar, you will see that we create two class, the counter increment pressed and the counter decrement pressed. Both of them are used inside the counter block. You can see that we have the block, which use the counter event. And inside we will either use the counter increment or decrement. And both of them will emit a new state either plus one or minus one. So let's go back inside the counter event and you will see that we also use an abstract class called the counter event. So both of them will extend this counter event. And we need this because inside the counter block, you see that we use the counter event. So the counter increment and the counter decrement are part of the counter event. And this is why we need to put inside the counter event the abstract class. Great, so now that we have created the main, the event, the block, the state, we are ready for the next step, the counter page. Okay, so for the counter page, it will be pretty simple. We have the build and this one give us a context, which we will use in order to create the counter block. So you only have to say context.read and inside you put the block that you want to read. And keep in mind that you can only use this because inside the main, we have wrapped the entire counter page application with the block provider. Otherwise it will not work. So let's go back inside the counter page. Okay, so now that we have created this final counter block, 
we can move along. The next thing will be inside the body, we have a center and a block builder. In the block builder, you will need to put the counter block and the counter state. This will give you a builder with the state of the application. So you can use this state in order to display things. In this example, we use a for loop inside a stack widget and the state that count will give us exactly the number of image we need. After this, we just create a positioned widget which randomize the place of each image and display the Batman logo. Okay, so we are able to display the information coming from the block, but what about if you want to change this information? For this, we'll go inside the floating action button. We have a column which use two different floating buttons. And when we press on it, we use the counter block which we have created at the beginning, if you remember. So let's go back inside our code and you will see that we also say counterblock.add and we want to add an event, for example, the counter increment or the counter decrement. These events has been created inside the counter event, if you remember. And so if we go back inside the counter page and we use the counter block to add an event, this will trigger the counter block machine, which will find which event it was, for example, the counter increment or decrement and emit a new counter state with the new value. All right, so this was how it works. But what about we do a practical exercise together? What if we want our application to have a third button that will delete everything and start from scratch? For this, I will need to go inside the counter page. I will add a new floating button. The icon will be changed for something exposure zero. I will also need to add a sized box in order to make it look a little bit better. And I will need to change the counter decrement pressed for something else. So I will create a new event called the counter reset pressed. And now inside my counter block, I can create another event, which this one will be the counter reset pressed. And because we want to reset everything, we will set the counter state to zero. So now if I reset the entire application and I click on zero, oh, it's not working. Obviously it's not working because we need to go inside the counter page and replace the decrement for the reset. And so if I restart once again, I add multiple Batman logo and I click on zero, you will see that it's now working. And at this point, you probably have question in your mind. What should you do with the folder structure if you need more than one action? And how can you modify the state to create named arguments? For the folder structure, you can create one folder for each action. And inside you will have the block folder with the block, the event, and the state for each single action. And this is the overall structure of your project if you have more than one action. And now what about the named arguments? First, if you want, you can create another argument inside the counter state if you need to. Second, if you want to change this into a named argument, you will need to use the curly bracket and use the required. Once you have this, you need to go back inside the counter block and add the count as the argument. And you need to do do this for each single counter state. And you can see that the application is perfectly the same. But what if you need to learn more about architecture patterns? Well, in 2025, I will have this solution for you. But for now, just thank you for watching and I see you in the next one. Bye.